Well, good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris back again, and I think uh, I've got uh, I've received a few uh, positive comments, so I want to go ahead and do another uh, dosage calculation problem. We'll work through this one will be a bit harder than the uh, last one. So what I'm going to try to do here again, uh, my art is a work in progress when it comes to this, is I, I want you to imagine that I have a pre-filled syringe. So here is my best drawing of a pre-filled syringe. All right, there's a little stopper there. And I have screwed a pre-filled syringe of dextrose. And I'll just draw the dextrose here, okay. So I have D50, or dextrose 50%. So we'll do that, D50% in water. D50W, okay? I have D50W in the syringe there. And of course, this is going to go into the IV and um, Let's just say that you get on scene with a patient and the, uh, the EMT, intermediate, or advanced EMT, or maybe even the paramedic reports that he administered 10 milliliters, 10 milliliters of this D50% of dextrose 50% to the patient, okay? So 10 milliliters of this syringe here was, were admin, was administered to the patient. And so now the question that I have for you guys is, how many milligrams has the patient received? How many, how many milligrams does the patient receive? Okay, that's what we need to know. Now this is a, a slightly more complicated problem um, and the way that I will choose to attack the problem is I will choose to attack it through the agency of percentages. Whenever you see a medication um, concentration as a percentage Percent always means one thing and one thing only when it comes to pharmacology or concentrations of medications. Percentage always equals the number of grams, okay, the number of grams in 100 milliliters of solution. So if I have a 1% medication, we'll say, a medication that's 1% concentration, that equals one gram in 100 milliliters, okay? If I have a 5% solution, that's gonna be five grams in 100 milliliters. Okay, the 100 milliliters never changes. Okay, it's always grams out of 100, and the number of grams is the number on the percentage here. So when we're talking about 50% dextrose, let me just go ahead and erase all this stuff here real quick. When we talk about 50% dextrose, 50% dextrose is going to be how many grams in 100 milliliters? Well, it's 50%, so 50% is going to equal 50 grams in 100 milliliters. Now, what I like to do at this point is I like to simplify as much as possible, and whenever I see zeros, I get rid of them. Uh, so we have two zeros down here and a zero up here. So what we can do is we can just draw a line through that, cancel those zeros out, and that gives me five grams in 10 milliliters, okay? 
<clears throat> now the question, let's go back up to the question here. The question asks how many milligrams, okay? So I don't want to know grams, but I want to know milligrams. So it would probably be more convenient at this point to go, once I've uh, reduced this, is to go ahead and just convert this to milligrams, okay? So um, if you remember back to our conversion factors, there are 1,000 milligrams per one gram. Okay, that's our conversion conversion factor, milligrams to grams, grams to milligrams. So if one gram is a thousand, two grams must be two thousand, three grams must be three thousand, etc. So five grams, okay, five grams is going to be five thousand milligrams in ten milliliters. Okay, these are equivalent statements. It is it is equivalent to say five grams in ten milliliters or five thousand milligrams in ten milliliters. Okay, because five grams equals five thousand milligrams, five thousand milligrams equals five grams. Likewise, it's equivalent to say fifty grams in a hundred milliliters, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now that I've I've converted this to milligrams, um, we have some zeros here. So I'm going to knock out some zeros, and now I have 500 milligrams per one milliliter. Now at this point, I can either I can do a couple of things. Um, I can go through a dimensional analysis where I write my uh, what I know, what I know, oops, on this side, and what I want to know on this side. What I do know for a fact now is that 50% dextrose is equivalent uh, to 500 milligrams per one mil. Okay, so I can just as easily do that. 500 milligrams in one mL equals, and I am giving uh, 10 milliliters, right? I have given 10 milliliters of that medication, and I want to know how many milligrams that is. So I am going to put 10 milliliters down here. Remember, milliliters on bottom, milligrams, whatever mass on top. And I'm going to put an X here because I don't know. And then I can run through the process of cross-multiplying and solving for X. Okay, that's, that's certainly one way of doing it. The, the other way of doing it is, is I have a very simple conversion factor here, and um, let's just go ahead and draw that uh, down here for you guys. Um, I have 500 milligrams um, per 1 mL, and I can just kind of think about this, and I don't have to do all this dimensional analysis. I can go, well, if I have 1 milliliter, that's 500 milligrams, right? So two milliliters is a thousand, three milliliters is fifteen hundred, and so on and so forth. And what I can do is um, I can just multiply this by ten, right? Because this is a this is one milliliter. This is just a one to one kind of kind of factor. So it might be quicker and easier in this case when I can get down to uh, something out of one milliliter. That let's just go ahead and go. 500 times 10, right? 500 times 10, right here, and that's just the five drops down, and then one, two, three, so I'll add my three zeros, one, two, three zeros, so that's 5,000 milligrams. So I have given, if, I, if, if the, the paramedic or EMT on scene administered 10 milliliters of this dextrose 50%, then we can say that that patient received a total of uh, 5,000 milligrams of medication. Or, if you didn't notice before, you, you should be able to notice now, 
um, that when we converted over to milligrams, we had this little middle conversion here, and that says five grams in 10 milliliters, and well, the 10 milliliter and the 10 milliliter match up. So really, at this point, all I had to have done is just convert the five to 5,000 and carry the 10 over, and I would have had my answer without having to do all this extra math. Um, but some people have to go through the whole process to, to understand it, and some people don't. So I just wanted to show you the multiple ways that you can figure this problem out. And some of them take more time than others, but ultimately, um, if you can consistently get to uh, the right answer, depending on how you do it, uh, you'll be just fine. So hopefully you guys found that helpful, and hopefully you found it helpful working with uh, percentages. Okay, as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.